If you want to solder surface mount components to a PCB, you've got a few options. You can use a regular old soldering iron with magnification and do it by hand. Or you can use a hot air rework station and heat up the board and the solder until everything reflows. But if you've got a lot of components to do or you have a whole batch of PCBs, this is going to get really tedious. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to convert this toaster oven into a solder reflow oven. Obviously, there are industrial ovens designed to do this, but if you're a hobbyist like me and you want to reflow your components at home, this is a really great option. I'm not doing anything novel here. There's a whole bunch of people out there who have already taken regular toaster ovens and turned them into reflow ovens. But I want to do this in a way that requires as few modifications to the toaster oven as possible. Now, I should give a disclaimer here. If you're going to do this, don't use the toaster oven for food after you've used it for reflowing solder. There's a lot of extra chemicals and fumes that go into reflow and you don't want that mixing in with your food. The basic premise is this, solder reflow ovens need to be able to follow a solder reflow profile. They need to be able to adjust their temperature over time according to certain specifications. To accomplish this, I'm going to use two components. I've got a thermocouple here that I'm going to be able to read with a microcontroller. This is going to give me a precise reading of the temperature at the board inside of the oven. I'm going to use a PID control loop inside the microcontroller to tell me when to turn on and off the oven. And I'm going to do that using a solid state relay. Most of the DIY reflow ovens that I've seen require you to open up the toaster oven and cut wires and attach them to your relay. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to have a separate box outside that houses the relay and the thermocouple. And I'm just going to plug in the toaster oven to that external box. I also want to have a user interface for this reflow oven so I've got a TFT touchscreen display. To start things off, I've found a little knob on the back here that I'm not sure what it does. Maybe it has a purpose and I'm not supposed to mess with it, but it has a little rivet that I could drill out and it would make the perfect size hole to stick the thermocouple through. So I'm going to remove that rivet so that I can insert the thermocouple. Once I've got that done, I can write up some code on the Arduino board and start measuring temperature inside the toaster oven. Let me explain my setup. I've got an integrated circuit on this breakout board that can read the thermocouple. It talks to the microcontroller using the SPI interface. I've got the thermocouple wire run through the hole in the back of the toaster oven and I've got it wrapped around the rack here so it just kind of sits in the middle. So this will give me temperature readings inside the toaster oven. But if I want to control the heat of the toaster oven, I need to be able to turn on and off the power source. So I've got this solid state relay connected up to the plug. Like I said earlier, I'll be using a PID control loop to control the temperature inside the oven. My input is the temperature sensor and my output is the relay. I can turn on and off the toaster oven to maintain the heat. It's going to be hard to tell whether or not the toaster oven is on or off just by looking at it. So I've grabbed my son's nightlight and I'm going to plug it into the same outlet that the toaster oven is plugged into. So that way we can see whether or not it's on or off. When I start the code, you're going to see a basic solder reflow profile. It's got three segments, a preheat stage, a soak stage, and a reflow stage. So I've got different temperatures and different time durations set for each of those stages. Okay, so I've just started the Arduino code running, and you can see that the lamp is turned on, which means the toaster oven is running, and now it's in the preheat segment. So it's going to try to increase the temperature until it reaches that set point of 180 degrees. The orange line on the graph is the current temperature, and that blue line is the set point. I want you to keep your eye on the lamp as the temperature gets close to that set point, because you're going to see the lamp turn off before it reaches the set point. That's the PID algorithm working. It wants to try to maintain that temperature, and so it doesn't want to overshoot, so it'll turn off the lamp, it'll turn off the toaster before it reaches that temperature. So there you go, it just turned off, even though it hasn't reached the temperature yet, but the temperature's still climbing, and so it'll try to turn on and off the toaster oven to maintain that heat. So it looks like the temperature did overshoot a little bit, but that can be fixed by adjusting the PID constants in the algorithm. We're getting close to a minute and a half here, which is the end of the preheat and soak stage. So pretty soon you're gonna see the set point increase up to that reflow temperature. So there it goes. The set point just increased to 230 degrees Celsius. So the toaster oven will remain on until it tries to reach that temperature. It's interesting to watch the lamp turn on and off as it hovers above and below that set point. Now the set point is zero, the toaster oven is off and it'll now cool down. I can open the door of the oven 
and you can watch uh, all of the heat just came out when I did that, but you can watch the temperature on the screen kind of drop down. I've got the basic functionality of this working, so now all I need to do is wrap all of this up into an enclosure and then write some firmware for that user interface on the TFT display. It's pretty straightforward. It has a few buttons to edit the preheat, the soak, and the reflow stages. So I can set the temperature and the duration for each of those stages. Once I confirm those settings, it will plot that reflow profile. This gives me a quick little visualization of what the reflow profile looks like, and then I can hit the start button. To test the reflow of and out, I'm going to put a couple of switches on a PCB that I designed. If I was going to populate this whole board, I would use the stencil that I ordered for this PCB, but since it's just a couple of components, I'm going to apply that solder paste using a syringe. If you want to learn more about prototyping with solder stencils, there is a video right here on the DigiKey YouTube channel. I've used a different color to designate the different stages. Red is for preheat, orange is for soak, yellow is for reflowing, and blue is for cooling down. This is a project that has been on my list for a really long time, and I'm really excited to have it now and actually be able to use it. If this is something you want to build for yourself, I'm going to have a list of all of the components as well as the design files and the firmware available for download. Right now, the firmware is super basic. There's a lot of cool features that I would love to add. If you end up downloading this code and making modifications, please make a pull request on GitHub. That way, everybody can benefit from your hard work. If you're looking for something to watch next, check out this video where I build a Wi-Fi connected soldering iron that sends me a snarky notification anytime I forget to turn it off. That's it for this video. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Sized Engineer and I look forward to seeing you next time.